Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot, a quarterfinal preview. Rafael Nadal versus Taylor Fritz. We're going to get into it. This is going to be an intriguing matchup because a lot of people think Taylor Fritz can cause, if not an upset, at least a lot of trouble to Rafael Nadal on the grass of Wimbledon. And, wow, well, you have to get my thoughts in a second. Before you do, though, remember to hit that like button, please, if you haven't done so already, and do subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. It's great to have all of you um, tuning into the channel. It really is. Uh, it does mean the world to us. So uh, do remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, your support is the reason why uh, we are growing as a channel, and it's great to see the growth. If your podcast is still on Watcher, remember to leave a rating review, all that good stuff. You know what to do. Cool. Let's get into it. Rafael Nadal versus Taylor Fritz. The head head is one all. Uh, we know that because, of course, Taylor Fritz beat him after being one love down in the head-to-head -head and beating at Indian Wells in the final where Nadal had uh, the cracked ribs and uh, Taylor Fritz had some sort of ankle niggle as well. Uh, so, look, I think from a confidence point of view, Taylor Fritz will be happy that at least he's managed to get a win over Nadal and uh, quite recently as well. So that's a good sign for Taylor Fritz. The other good sign is that he hasn't dropped a single set this whole tournament he's the only player to not drop a set so that's a pretty great sign for him as well uh in terms of other signs well he'll be extremely happy to be in a position at the moment where he will be coming into it fresh because of not having to have played long matches however it may potentially be detrimental given that uh, sometimes playing slightly longer matches uh, give, means that you build up resilience and obviously he's still pretty inexperienced on the grass at Wimbledon. Uh, he hasn't gone deep a lot of time. So uh, this is kind of relatively new territory for someone like Taylor Fritz, but he's of course an exciting player and someone who continues to go from strength to strength. For Rafa Nadal, he's been here before, of course. He's been to numerous quarterfinals at Wimbledon. He's a two-time winner. He's been there, done it, you know, got the t-shirt kind of thing. So what can we expect? Uh, well, before we go into the more tactical part of the video and talk about how the styles gel, what, how both players have been playing and, and kind of what tactically both might try and employ and potentially utilize or, or even, you know, potentially pounce on, I guess, uh, some weaknesses of their opponent, we're going to go into the route to this stage. So look at Taylor Fritz first. And as I said, all straight set wins, so against Kubler, Molkan, Alistair Gray, Mossetti. Uh, so that's in from the most previous opponent to the first opponent, which was Mossetti. For Nadal, Van Azan, Schulte recently, then before that, Sanego, Barankis in four sets, Rundelow in, straight, in four sets, sorry, even as well. So he, yeah, had two four set wins. And then since then, Sanego, Van Azan, Schulte, straight set wins. Van Azan, Schulte was an interesting one because he was, what, five, two up, and then Van Zandt somehow managed to come back into it. Nadal really gifted it to him. He was serving at 5-2. And he ended up <laughs> having to win it on a tiebreaker and a very tight tiebreaker in the end as well. So that would have been slightly disappointing. It was 8-6 as well. Uh, but for Nadal, he will be thinking, well, look, I got it done. Uh, and that's true. He did get it done. Well, let's look at it from a more tactical standpoint. What... And I guess, how well has Nadal and Fritz been playing? So we can talk about Nadal first. His serving has got increasingly better and better. He served a higher proportion of aces uh, each match in general. His first serve percentage has been up and his speeds have been up as well, especially on the second serve. I don't think I've seen him serve that big for a long time on the second serve, that is. I mean, he's serving at kind of 100, sort of 95 to 105 miles per hour mark and range which is like really big for anyone um on tour unless your name is john isner or riley apelka so i think look that is positive it's very very positive if you're an adult supporter uh not as many double faults as well uh, as the rounds have gone on and i think that's again a very very positive sign uh in terms of other factors I think we need to look into how he's been striking the ball. And I think Sonego was his best performance in terms of how he was timing the ball, especially on the forehand. And that was great to see. 
Um, against Van der Dijn Schoppel, I think wasn't as good, but got it done in straight sets. So that's a good sign as well. Uh, and the best sign, I think, was the fact that not just he was serving fantastically, but I thought he volleyed really well against Van der Dijn Schoppel as well. Came to the net a higher proportion of times. And I think against Taylor Fritz, he, he needs to do something similar as well. Uh, they're not the same player himself and Van der Dijn Schoppel, but they're, there are some similarities. I would say Taylor Fritz is obviously a, a better player generally, uh, and he probably has it's one of those things that you think about Van der Zandt's shop and I reckon he's probably maybe a 6 out of 10 in everything but I reckon Taylor Fritz is a 6.5 7 out of 10 out of, in everything right generally uh, that's kind of the difference we're talking about I would say uh, so yeah I mean that's how I see it in terms of Nadal and what else he's been doing well the back end of the line was firing really well I thought for large parts of the match against Van der Zandt-Schop, which is fantastic. Uh, there were kind of less shanks, less frames going around. And, and his returning, I think, really turned on, especially against Sanego. Uh, a lot of good returns, a lot of good backhand slice returns, which I think maybe Sanego also let him get away with at times. Uh, I don't think he'll get away with that as much with Taylor Fritz, who's got a, a much better backhand than a Sanego or Van der and uh, doesn't, I think he won't be maybe as as uncomfortable taking the ball as low as some other people potentially. Although he's a big, big guy at six foot four, if I'm not mistaken, so it'll be interesting to see how he does take it at ankle height. And I'm sure that will be a tactic Nadal will use and, and see how Taylor Taylor does, I guess, adapt to that change. Um, so that's kind of Rafa Nadal wrapped up in terms of his his Wimbledon so far and how he's performed. Taylor Fritz, as I said, straight set wins all round. He's been serving well. He's We know he's a massive server. Uh, from the back of the court, though, he's been hitting the ball really well. Uh, very crisply uh, on the forehand and backhand. I think when he's at his best is when he's not holding back on the forehand side. His backhand seems to be consistently good. Um, it's very reliable. Uh, speeds are kind of around, are consistently the same. On the forehand side, we do see kind of shifts in speed. Um, he sometimes accelerates through the ball uh, and that's good and that's positive. Sometimes he can decelerate uh, on the forehand side when he's not feeling as confident or the opponent's a bit more tricky um, and he's being slow balled a little bit uh, and he can struggle and he, he did say that I think it was against Kubler that in the final set he struggled a little bit to find a, a rhythm on the ground strokes after they were hitting the ball very crisply in the first two sets and obviously he managed to win. So I think you know, pace on the ball is not always the answer. And that's why someone like an adult will use the backhand slice or a shorter one or a bit more kind of coverage on the forehand, etc. And that could potentially be a factor. Uh, but generally, Taylor Fritz has been good. Uh, I think he's been solid. Uh, you know, he's been good from the back of the court. He clearly, I think fitness-wise as well, he gets his, he makes his way around the court a lot quicker than people expect. He's a pretty good volleyer as well, and he's a massive server. He can serve up to 140 miles per hour plus. Um, he can hit his spots and hit numerous aces, and he can be a danger on a court-like center court at Wimbledon on the grass where the ball's going to zip through. So, look, some positive signs if you're a Taylor Fritz fan. I think the biggest issue will be the occasion, will be a more than necessarily maybe Rafa Nadal and how he handles it. Um, but also, how does he apply himself to the matchup? I think he can't just go into it thinking, I can just play my best tennis and I'll win. There needs to be tactics employed, and I'm sure he will. And we're going to talk about it tactically now because I think, let's talk about the server turn dynamic first. I think that's kind of the easiest, it's always the easiest place to start off with. If Nadal serves like he has been doing in the last couple of games, it's going to be quite tough for Taylor Fritz to get into uh, the Nadal service games and get big inroads. But Nadal, he tends to always give you at least a chance. Um, there, this is, there seems to be at least one game per set, per set, sorry, even, where he will get taken to juice, where he may have to save break points. And more often than not, he probably will save those break points. But sometimes he does falter and he may get broken and then he may break back straight away. Uh, there may be tr a trade of breaks or, you know, he may get broken and then lose a set. And he's been prone this year anyway to 
to lose the third set, right? He did it in the first two rounds and in at the Australian Open as well. There were sets where really he his level dipped a lot. So that's a, a sign for Taylor Fritz, I guess, as well. That um look, I mean, he needs to Taylor Fritz needs to play some really, really good tennis. I think he needs to return well against the Nadal serve. Nadal's gonna hit the, the serve out wide to the Taylor Fritz backhand and see how it holds up. Fritz's backhand return is pretty good. He also go down the tee to the Fritz forehand and see how that holds up. On that, we're talking about the ad side. On the juice side, of course, uh, he will try and utilize the kind of the arc to serve down the tee away from the Fritz backhand. But Fritz has got a pretty good wingspan, so you might be able to get a lot of those back. But also the flatter serve out wide from the juice side, which has been firing for the majority of the season. Uh, and obviously, it's quite a good serve to utilize. It gives the returner a lot less time on the forehand side to whip. Um, you know, a return winner or or a very attacking return to get on the front foot. They, they're rushed on that side and he tends to find a pretty good angle there as well. Uh, second serves as well have been really good into the body, into the backhand, uh, mixing it up even as long as into the forehand, but generally good speeds, good amount of spin on the ball, not letting the opponent really attack it. Um, and if they do hit a winner off that second serve or a great attacking shot, it's because they've just hit something special and that happened a couple of times against Botic, but you just say okay fine fair play you know not really much I can do about that um for Nadal of course you know I mean he's faced big servers before so that's Van der Zandt is as I said in a similar mold uh but Taylor Fritz will go big on his serve and I think Nadal maybe playing Botic is a, potentially a good thing because they're relatively similar styles and I think you know, he will be pretty grateful that he just faced someone who, you know, would have given him a little bit of a taste of what it's going to be like to face Taylor Fritz, who uh, is arguably a bigger server and, and arguably a better server as well. So we'll see how, how Taylor serves and a lot will come down to how both players serve and then return as well in turn. Uh, but Rafa has been returning better as Wimbledon has gone on, as I said, and the backhand slice return has been pretty good for the most part. He... He may go down the middle of the court, and that's fine. Sometimes it is too floaty, and on the grass, you know, people will, even on the grass, people will move really well and hit an into-out forehand or into-in forehand or cross-court forehand, sorry, even, and be on the front foot or they'll hit a winner for the one-plus shot because they just had so much time to set their feet. Uh, so that's fine. But Nadal will be thinking, well, at least I've got that deep into court, though. Sometimes he will be more tricky with it and it will be a backhand slice low over the net, find an angle. He doesn't care if it's short as long as it's making it difficult and uncomfortable for the server. And then, of course, on the forehand side, uh, I think Taylor Fritz should be utilizing the serve out wide on the ad side because that serve into the Nadal forehand is not a bad one to utilize. Nadal wants to be able to widen up the forehand and if he goes big, out wide on the ad side into the forehand, he won't be able to he'll have to uh, have little to no backswing uh, and he'll struggle to get it back into play with a lot of, I guess, power uh, and harm to the Taylor Fritz game. So that's something he might utilize uh, for sure. Um, he might also try and serve out wide, especially on the juice side, if Nadal's going to serve, stand quite far back, slice serve, even potentially your kick serve. Drag Nadal out and then go forehand on the line, which is the classic whitey play, or even go behind him. Uh, we might see some serve volley attempts from Taylor as well, which will be interesting to see. But generally, uh, that dynamic is kind of set up. I think everyone knows vaguely how they think it's going to go. Um, I think Nadal will have his chances, as will Taylor Fritz in return games. The question is going to be who's going to be more clinical. And also, does Nadal up his level now that we are in the second week and we're starting to approach the big leagues? Uh, the other question then is what else do what other factors do we need to cater through? Well, of course, the, the classic one with Nadal and any other, any of his opponents is how well do the backhands hold up and can Nadal prove a stand test to Taylor Fritz's backhand? Yes. Will it pass? For the most part, I think it will. I think it's very, very solid for Taylor Fritz's backhand. I don't think he minds taking it shoulder height. Now, of course, on the grass, you don't get as much bounce anyway, generally, um, but you'll still get some and I think even if it's shoulder height, I feel like he'll be comfortable there. He will be comfortable, and that's a, a good sign for Taylor Fritz. Um, 
Nadal may then have to change tactics if he's not really able to push um, Taylor back and then try and win the point. He's really having to work really hard for it. He may then try and go down the line, take a few more risks. The backhand cross as well has been really good. Generally in the backhand on the line, uh, he'll try and come to the net, I would imagine, uh, a fair portion of the points, especially because look, coming to the net, finishing the point off by either serve volleying or you know the rally going a bit longer and then finishing off the net is always a positive because one, you want to conserve your energy for later, later in the tournament because that's what people are aiming to do. They're aiming to go deep. Um, and that's clearly something that Nadal is wanting to do, right? He wants to be in the semis. He wants to be in the final. He wants to give himself the best possible chance to win. So he will utilize the short backhand slice as well, Rafa, um, I would imagine, and try and make it awkward for Taylor. He's very tall, uh, six or four, as I said, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that will be quite tough to consistently kind of get low uh, and also not just get low, but then hit a shot, which is um, with intent and something that, you know, people are then happy with. So, yeah, I think Rafa Nadal against Taylor Fritz is a, is a really interesting one. And he, he could get blown off the court, Nadal, but I would imagine in the forehand, uh, to backhand exchanges, Taylor Fritz won't mind it too much. Uh, I think in the Taylor Fritz forehand into the backhand of Nadal, Nadal's backhand is pretty solid, to be honest with you. I think he will just hold it up. Um, he will try and run around the backhand as well. Um, but I think he will have a little bit more license to do that, uh, as he always does, just because his footwork is so good. He's able to make a lot of backhands into forehands, um, rather than, of course, it just being into his forehand or him uh, over-forcing it. That makes sense. So, yeah, interesting to see. Uh, we'll find out what the score is and the the result, of course. Uh, we'll be covering it tomorrow on top of also Halep and Anissa Moe, hopefully, so tune in for that. But yeah, I think Nadal to win in four sets. I think Taylor Fritz might have a couple of fantastic games and take a set, but I can't see him winning uh, this one. I I know a lot of people think he might cause the upset, and that's that's fair enough. I think Raffron Grass is arguably his, his worst surface, uh, and then you've got someone who, yeah, you got you've got someone who in Taylor Fritz who he's just he's happy to progress, happy to learn. He wants to go deeper. Uh, I'm like I'm liking it from him. I'm liking it from Rafa Nadal as well. Um, both players have had a very good tournament so far. Let's see how both get on. Uh, but yeah, I've got Nadal in four sets. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Remember to that like button, subscribe if you're new. And of course, we will see you on the next video. Thank you so much.